we have any new deductions as well? Dunn was trapped and poisoning. Yes, they go together. After being trapped in the colonial collection room by the killer, Montague Dunn was affected by inhaling a virulent vegetal poison. I always said that vegetables aren't good for you. Having said that, yesterday and today I had meatballs that were not made out of meat. They were made out of um, mashed up soy product and uh, sun-dried tomatoes. They were quite good. <laughs> uh, Watson, you're at my telescope. Someone should take Toby for a walk. I'm sure they should be. Have you be. found something interesting? I wanted to look through the telescope. Is that creepy woman still over there watching us? She's so weird and creepy. Uh, nothing on the analysis table. Right, let's search. Uh, what were we searching for? Oh, yeah, stolen plants. So we're going to need to look in, not chemistry, I guess, encyclopedia entries. Yes, there we go. Horse meatballs. Oh, no, I've got some of those as well. You mean the IKEA ones? Mm. No, these were those Linda McCartney um, like vegetarian or vegan meatballs or whatever. But they're quite good. I dried them out a little bit the first time round, and I cooked them a little less this time round, and they were a bit better. So yeah, very little fat, lots of protein. That's what I'm trying to do with my diet right now. Uh, so British architects, so we don't want art, economic sciences, technology, history, medicine, botany, there we go. Medical herbs. That is not no. the one oh, I need. Exotic plants, volume four, poisonous. These plants have a certain toxicity in common, more or less variable. Ah, that first one. Second one, Diabolica Flora. They're all on here. Only the first three can be dangerous to humans, particularly Florum Diabolica. Because it needs blood. I said this earlier. Only under very specific conditions. Let me guess when it is... Particulate in the air and inhaled, perhaps. The plant should react to a process of aggression which, uh, against which it will issue deadly spores. Ooh, okay. So if it's, you know, like poked and prodded at, it probably poofs, like puffs out spores. Interesting. Here it is. The only one that could have been breathed in then. So somebody stole the plants to create the poison. Theft and moida. Killers uh, may be those who stole the exotic plants, including a deadly species, from the last exhibition at Kew Gardens. Sensing a sort of a poetic end in the killer's mind. There's a personal revenge motive here. Because, oh, just put my name on the displays, that will do. Don't bother crediting the rest of the staff. Yeah, that's what it seems like to me. Uh, search the symbol of the broken pot. That could be in the art encyclopedias. Probably not. That is not. That is not the one I need. Antique art of the British that Museum. Is not, that is not architectural. Okay. Technology history. None of those. There'll be nothing of it. So it's not going to be in the encyclopedias then. Um, it'll be in newspapers. Would it be in research? Poisons and toxins. It's got to be something to do with divine. Marks and symbols. The divine syndicate. Oh. The divine scholastic syndicate for vegetation veneration. The members of the syndicate worship Trewan, the god king. They strive to obtain spiritual peace and release themselves from the material world. So generous donations are appreciated. <laughs> 
Okay. There it is. Mm, material possessions are so bad. The divine for you. Please syndicate give us money. is not a supplier to Kew Gardens. Besides, there is no address here. Interesting. Yeah, my kind of cult. I mean, if you're the one running it right, you know. So the symbol on the exhibition pot. Right. Schools. London Garden Supplies. There we go. Seymour's Garden Garden Equipment and Supplies. We are a premium supplier for all your landscape gardening and timber requirements. Full range supply and delivery of sands, soils, mulches, pots, and anything else you may need. 3 Blurton Road, London. Here it is. So they provided the pots for that display. Interesting. Oh, there's uh, the mail. We didn't look at the letters, did we? From the last case. There's still the one there that he never opens. I'd love to know what's in that. Right, so... Dear Mr. Holmes, I've finally found the courage to write you a letter. I can scarcely find words to express my gratitude for your kindness on that terrible day. I believe my life to be ruined, but at the same time I realised there to be only one person in the world who truly loved me and who I loved in return. His name we both know, he is Captain Jack Crocker. Oh, happy ever after them. His love has given me true reason to live. Even if we cannot be together in the end, none of this could have happened without you, Mr. Holmes. Yours sincerely, Mary Brackenstall. Oh, We did good. We did a good thing. Right, so, um... Find the plant, inspect the Kew Garden staff buildings, and discover who killed them. We can also... A map of London and the surrounding yeah. area. It... Go to the gardens. Awkward silence. There we go. Alrighty then. You need to let us in. Tell us about the emptied colonial room. Mr. Hamish, can you explain to us what happened to the colonial collection? It seems somewhat depleted. But, uh, oh, most likely maintenance work, tidying up. You're not sure, then? But you're the deputy director. Well, I am busy. I cannot be everywhere at once. As deputy director, how was your relationship with Montague done? To be honest with you, Mr. Holmes, it could have been better. You see, every Tuesday he would carry out his inspection of the gardens, but it was solely to make an impression, great pretense that he cared at all. He would give out absurd orders, ignoring anyone else's opinion. He would then disappear for the rest of the week. He was what some might call a man of action. I'd say rather he was overzealous and chaotic. So after all, it was no wonder, perhaps, that he ended up like that if you take into consideration his kind of lifestyle. Hmm. You mentioned that Mr. Dunn led a particular lifestyle. Well, it's no secret that he enjoyed, uh, celebrating, shall we say? He was a member of the London Smart Set. He was famous for it. That and... And? He had an eye for the ladies, to put it mildly, Mr. Holmes. Aha. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, give us the keys. Mr. Hamish, can you tell us who holds the keys to the locked greenhouses? That would be Albert, Mr. Dunn's son. Yes, Albert keeps all the keys, and one can only imagine why. What do you mean? Well, he was never interested in Kew Gardens before. And now all of a sudden he is trying to act as if he owns the place. 
I think he wants to take over the management here. <laughs> He'd do better to leave that to me. He has no experience. No, none at all. Yes, but people do say that he'd make a good manager. What is your opinion of Albert as a student of botany? He's useless. I often tell him so, and I can only give him cleaning tasks. Botany is not his life's work, and his father well knew it. He was furious about it. He was? Oh, yes. He forced his son to work here, and he never missed an opportunity to criticize him publicly. Kind of Are like you able you. to elaborate <laughs> on that? Well... For example, with our last exhibition here, Mr. Dunn had Albert make a presentation speech. But then, while the lad was speaking, Mr. Dunn interrupted him, asking him difficult questions, making him look like a failure. It was with the intention of making a fool of him, Mr. Holmes. That must have been terribly humiliating. Yes, he was crushed, and he had to leave. Everybody was making fun of poor Albert. That is, except for Miss Margaret White, who is such a nice lady and who always takes pity on Albert. You mentioned a Miss White. Would you tell us more about her? She is a student who works here part-time. She is quite charming indeed. She possesses a great talent for botany. You should take a look at some of her experiments that she carried out in the laboratory. Ah, if only she were not so naive. Why naive? The way she used to flutter around Mr. Montague Dunn. And he... why, he couldn't help but be flattered by all her attention. How could an intelligent woman such as Miss White not see through his game? I can only scratch my head and wonder. Yeah, so everybody does seem a pretty special kind of uh, asshole in this place, yeah. You tell me, Mr. Hamish, do you grow the more deadly variety of plant here? You mean insectivorous? Yes, but nothing larger than that. And yet, you had a very poisonous plant on your recent thingy. Hmm. Are you aware of the Divine Syndicate? The Divine what? Is this a joke? No, I am quite serious. What a ridiculous name. Anyway, I have never heard of this syndicate. Thank you, Mr. Hamish. We shall continue our investigation. He had a little hesitation there, didn't he? No, I've never heard of this syndicate. Hmm. Maybe he did. Maybe they got the plants from them. Maybe they, they were the ones that allowed them to display these particular plants. What should we do next, Holmes? Well, next... Oh. We will see if these have opened up yet. I don't think these have. Locked. They're still locked. Okay. What about the seed room? Or the nursery, rather? Locked. That's still locked. Okay. So, Hamish is a nice guy. Mmm, yeah. I mean, that was the weird thing as well. It was like, you know... On the one hand, he very much berates Albert, and he's like, oh, he's useless, blah, 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 blah. But then on the other hand, he's like, oh, it was so bad that his father used to humiliate him in public and bring him down like that. So many people were making fun of him. And it's like, mm, well, you've not exactly been friendly with him either. So, yeah. I'm down off your high horse. Also, I'm going to say this. You're overwatering these plants, Mr. Hamish. You only seem to water this part of the bed, and you're going to drown these poor things. You want to spread that water out a bit more. Albert! Chin healed yet? No. Tell me about Miss White. Who is Miss Margaret White? Ah, she is the young lady who studies with me. She visits here sometimes to help out with the greenhouses. In fact, she should be here today. She wanted to work at the seed house. That's the small greenhouse across from the large glass house. We noticed that a part of the colonial collection has been cleared. Ah, at the moment I'm just dealing with the storage room. I don't know much about the other rooms. 
I imagine that your relationship with your father may have been a strained one. Yes. I cannot say that he was a kind man, for he never listened to me at all. He forced me to work here. But now, after his death, I have been pondering it over. Perhaps he wasn't so wrong about me after all. I have to follow his path, and I have to manage Kew Gardens. And I can do it. I can be as good as any other who works here. Would you please tell us about Martin Hamish, the Deputy Director? Well, I have to tell you that Mr. Hamish is not and has never been the Deputy Director of Kew Gardens. My father would not have tolerated it. Indeed. Well, that is most interesting. He told us that he was. Hmm. Yes, because he believes that the management should be passed down to him now that my father is dead. But in actual fact, Mr. Hamish only has the honour of being the garden's longest-serving employee. In fact, if we are to think logically at all, it should be me who takes over the management of Kew Gardens. Do you not have a good relationship with Mr. Hamish? I suppose so. But we have very little in common. Mr. Hamish loves his plants and Kew that Gardens. That emoji is so creepy. I cannot say that I share his passion. I see. And how was his relationship with your father? Oh, he hated my father. It was obvious. He would be furious whenever my father boasted of Kew Gardens in the newspapers or at conferences. He was convinced that my father was stealing all of the credit for himself. Well, he kind of my was. My father treated Mr. Hamish in the same way as he treated anyone. watching you. Dismissively. With indifference. Make it stop. Oh god, there's another one. It's meant to express excitement. I know, but it looks too excited. This is weird. <laughs> Yes, tell, tell me about me. the Divine Have Syndicate. Have you ever heard of the Divine Syndicate? No, I cannot say that I have. Hmm. Do you hold the keys to all of these locked doors? Yes, you can have them. But I cannot give you the keys to the cloakroom. The employee's effects are private. I am sure you understand. Those are the Thank things you, I want man. to look at, though. We shall see you again soon. Hmm. Okay. It is the eyes. They look dead. Now, we'll go into the staff areas later. We'll check out things like the nursery first. Not locked anymore. <laughs> okay. What do we got? A work desk with stuff on it. Start our way over here and work back. What have we got there? It's like a music box. Perfume. A thesis written by Martin Hamish. Oh, really? A glasses case. It is empty. This area serves as Martin Hamish's office. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lidless, wreathed in fl Oh, no. Wrong universe. <laughs> But it is always watchful, just, you know, just all the same. But I mean, now I want to watch Lord of the Rings when I'm done playing. <laughs> These young plants must be delicate if they are kept in the nursery. Right, there's nothing in here. Sorry, not sorry. I know you're not. <laughs> what have we got here? Anything in here? No, just dirt. More dirt. Definitely nothing around here. Ah, diplomas. For outstanding botanical research, Martin Hamish. A master's Congratulations. degree diploma. It belongs to Martin Hamish. So that's his actual master's degree. Grower of the year, Martin Hamish. Sounds like he won the village fair or something. He got he brought he brought the biggest pumpkin to the stall, he did. He's the grower of the year. Presented to Martin Hamish for best grower of the year. <laughs> Game of the year as well, yes. He, he came with all the DLC when you bought him. He has a Game of the Year award, yeah. <laughs> Oh, what if the devs of the game were putting that in there as like a, hey, maybe we'll get Game of the Year. Let's put a reference in. 
There is a bust. This will be... <gasps> it's a bust of Mr. Dunn. It is a bust of Montague Dunn. And the piece is missing at the top. So look at the bottom, there's nothing there. But looky here. Kind of interesting. When he fell, he beamed this side of his head. And the bust is missing it as well. They're linked. I am curious if the marble that we found will fit this place. Here it is. The marble fragment that we found in the colonial collection room is what they have in common. So, that would have been knocked over as well during his attempts to get out of the room while he was being poisoned. The seeds of plant species are stored here. And then there would... Is there anything else in this tub? Excuse me, Watson. Thank you. Anything else in there? Just have a look at detective vision. Nope, nothing. So the guy had a, like a bust of himself in the colonial collection. He must have been very proud of that area, I would imagine. And underneath this tarpaulin, we're going to find ten more dead bodies, dismembered and chopped into little pieces. Or some old plants. Nocturnal plants, perhaps. Mushrooms, maybe. Hmm. Right, seed house. Open. Ah! Miss White, I presume. I will get to you in a moment. I just need to scrape my face against everything to see if there's any clues. We'll go around in detective vision after we've found the obvious stuff. She hasn't even looked up yet to be like, Excuse me, can I help you? No. From here, we are unable to see the interior of the colonial collection room. Okay. <laughs> That's an uh, interesting observation. Not sure why we need to make a it. A book about ships. Nothing at all to do with plants. By H. Archibald. These leather gloves are new and of good quality. They do not appear to have been used. This is Albert's workstation, then. He likes ships. He wanted to sail the seas. University of London Botanical Chemistry Study Book. Materials for college study. They belong to Albert. This place serves as Albert's office. Albert wanted to sail the world. Hmm. All right, let's go speak to the lady. Good day to you, miss. You have some very beautiful plants here. Oh, why, thank you, sir. And good day to you, too. But... Oh, I, I do beg your pardon. My name is Dr. John Watson. This is my good friend, Down, Mr. Watson. Sherlock Holmes. I am honored to make your acquaintance, gentlemen. My name is Margaret White. Excuse me, but are you Sherlock Holmes, the great detective? Yes, I am he. What a pleasure to see you here at Kew Gardens. Are you working on a case? Show me everything. Within reason. Expensive perfume. Oh. H. Archibald, as in... Um, Haddock from Tintin. Oh, maybe. You never know. Oh, there's some uh, blotches on the hand here. The poor family. 
but expensive perfume. Yeah, from malnutrition. So she's brought herself up in the world. There is another clue here somewhere. Thing we're missing. Where is it? Oh. Ah, the hand again. Unmarried. Okay. We got there. She hides her secrets well, this one. Oh, I just went back into the same thing. Why did I do that? We're done. Yes, a theft of plants that took place here a few days ago after their most recent exhibition. Oh, oh yes, of course. I quite forgot about that. <laughs> no, you're not, Samuel. You're late. How dare you, sir? I've been waiting for two and a half hours for you to show up so we can get the show started. You understand that, right? You've been holding this whole thing up. Gotta be better than this. Gotta be punctual. 